What's up everybody, how's it going? Today, we're gonna talk about the Google interviews. So I've posted a lot of videos on this channel sharing my experiences as someone who worked as a software engineer at Google for a little over two years, and they've been very well received. So I figured that I would make another video sharing my actual interview experience at Google, how the day of the on-site interviews went, at least from my point of view, what my mindset was, and what happened afterwards. If you're curious about how I actually landed these interviews, then I made a video on that. Be sure to check it out. I'll post the link in the description down below. But otherwise, if you want to know how the actual interviews went, then keep watching this video. Just a quick disclaimer that I'm not going to share anything confidential. So if you're expecting to hear the exact questions that I was asked or something like that, that's not going to happen. However, I will try to make the video as informative as possible so that if you have your Google coding interviews scheduled, or if you're hoping to one day apply to Google, or if you're just curious about the entire process, hopefully you will find this video very insightful. And if you're someone who has zero interest in Google, but for whom the YouTube algorithm happened to serve this video, then just sit back, smash the like button, and enjoy the video. So I was interviewing for a normal software engineer position, not front-end engineer, not back-end engineer, not machine learning engineer, not cloud reliability, cybersecurity as a service machine learning engineer. No, the title was just software engineer. And this was an entry-level position, or at least it was understood. I don't think it was ever explicitly told to me that it was an entry-level position, but this was my very first job. So in hindsight, this was for what's called an L3 position at Google, which is sort of the entry-level level. And I had been lucky enough to skip my technical phone interviews. Not sure why, but I did. And so these were my on-site coding interviews at Google. I had them scheduled for Monday, February 13th, 2017. My interviews were between 10 a.m. and 3.15 p.m. I had five back-to-back -back interviews with five different interviewers, and I had one lunch interview in the middle after the third interview. This is pretty standard for the big tech companies. Typically, they give four or five interviews apart from the lunch interview. I'm not really sure what determines whether you get four or five interviews. My guess is that candidates for whom the companies have less signal will get more interviews. So for example, someone like me who had no prior work experience and who had not done any technical coding interviews with Google, probably they gave me five interviews because they figured they didn't have any signal on me, so they wanted to get more from the on-site interviews, but I'm not really sure. My interviews were held in the New York City office because I was based in the New York City area, and I remember arriving at the office at around 9.30 a.m., so about 30 minutes before the interviews were set to start, and I'm not gonna lie, I was very nervous that day. I remember having a lot of nerves leading up to the interview, so in that morning, sitting in that lobby, I remember like feeling those, those butterflies in your stomach, which is kind of interesting because when I compare that experience to my more recent experience interviewing at Facebook, drastically different, right? Drastically different experiences. It goes to show you the sort of, uh, from the point of view of my mindset, uh, which goes to show you just how, 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 yeah, your, your circumstances and your mindset can really affect just how you feel on an interview day. I remember naturally at the Google interviews, I sort of felt like, like, whoa, this, this is it, you know? That was sort of my, my, my feeling uh, on that day. So then my recruiter, the person with whom I had been in contact leading up to the interviews, came to pick me up downstairs at around 10 a.m. and brought me upstairs to my interview room. I remember being in awe at the little section of the office that I got to see as I was walking towards the interview room. There was like a game room and there were scooters. By the way, if you ever get the chance to visit the New York City office or to work at the New York City office, the best thing, bar none, about that office are the scooters. You, there are scooters in the hallways that you're allowed to just like ride whenever. And I swear I will miss them so much. It is the most fun that I have ever had riding those scooters every single day in the hallways. 
But anyway, I did the gate. So then the recruiter chatted with me for a few minutes just to sort of tell me how the day was gonna go, to put me at ease. And then at 10.15 a.m. is when the first interview started. So this is when my internal switch sort of flipped. And those butterflies that I had in my stomach turned into adrenaline. I sort of became in the zone. I was ready to sort of just do it. Just do it. And I was given the option to use a laptop if I wanted to, which I did. As a side note, I would highly recommend if you are given that choice or that option to use a laptop, to definitely take it. Personally, I think that it's just far easier to actually write out code on a laptop than it is to do so on a whiteboard. And the beauty is that you can actually use both. You can write your code on the laptop, but you can use the whiteboard to sort of, you know, draw out your thoughts, go through examples. You can kind of ping pong between the two. So that's sort of a side note. I would highly recommend it though. Anyway, that first interview was very interesting. I think it was with a senior engineer, if I'm not mistaken. And two parts uh, sort of stick out as interesting. The first is that during the sort of introduction of the interview, we chatted about my uh, projects on my resume, or at least one project, the, the one that was written at the top of my resume, which was sort of a, a natural project to pick to talk about. The interviewer had asked me about it. And in hindsight, I think that was a mistake on my part because that top project on my resume was the most time consuming of my projects, but ironically it was the sort of least technically challenging one and the one that I was sort of least proud of. And I don't know, I ended up, I, I, I remember coming out of that discussion kind of feeling like, ugh, I didn't, put, I didn't put my best foot forward there. And that was really just a mistake. So nugget of wisdom that I can give you is put at the top of your resume, especially at the top of like your projects, for instance, the things that you're really most proud of that you think are gonna be the most impressive. The second thing that was kind of uh, interesting about that interview, that first interview is that at the very end, the, the last, let's say, 10 minutes, we had this sort of discussion, I'm not gonna get into the weeds of what it was about, but it was about, you know, something, part of the interview, right? Part of the question or questions or whatever. And I remember, like, I didn't feel super, like, good about that discussion. It was a good discussion, but, like, there were times where I was like, oh, do, like, do I have the right answer here? You know, like, overall, I don't know, it just wasn't, it wasn't, you know, the, the best, if that makes sense, or it wasn't, like, amazing. So I sort of came out of that first interview feeling kind of neutral. Like I'd definitely not done terrible. In fact, I, I thought that I'd done pretty well, but I was also like, I didn't do amazing. You know, I didn't like destroy it, if that makes sense. So I came out of that first interview feeling a bit neutral. The second interview, however, went very, very well. I remember that interview was sort of like the interview where it was just like, mm, mm, mm. I remember like, Mm. It just went well, like I knew I, I was able to come up with a solution immediately. I was able to mm, to come up with a pretty optimal solution to then optimize on top of that, then optimize even again on top of that. I just came out of that interview thinking, mm, just do it. That one I nailed, or at least that's how I felt. I have no idea, like in hindsight, I, I cannot know if I actually did well, but I, I think I did on that one. The third interview was very similar to the previous one, maybe a notch lower. I came out of it thinking that I did very well, nothing had gone particularly wrong, no big red flags. And then the lunch interview happened. Now the lunch interview, nothing too special, just a normal lunch interview. As a general rule of thumb, unless you do something really outrageous during the lunch interview, it will have no bearing on your performance or on your application. But that one was just pleasant. A fun fact, is that the person that I had lunch with ended up being on one of my sibling teams at Google once I worked there. That was kind of fun to see that person again sort of in, in the work setting, uh, you know, after I had passed the interviews. But apart from that, nothing special. Then the fourth interview came along. And I vividly remember finding that particular interview very, very difficult. I remember thinking, wow, these engineers don't kid around. But I also remember coming out of that interview feeling very good, feeling, feeling like I had done very well. And the reason is that in that interview, I did something that I always recommend that people do in their interviews. For instance, on Algo Expert, in the interview tips section on communication and on problem solving, I talk at length about this. Uh, by the way, 
This seems like a very good time to plug in Algo Expert if you're preparing for your coding interviews for big tech companies like Google and you want a good resource to practice, check out algoexpert.io, my company. We give you a curated list of coding interview questions. You have a coding workspace where you can run your code and run it against pre-made and custom test cases in five popular programming languages. And we have video explanations for every single question where we talk about the, the conceptual overview of the algorithm at hand, where we talk about the whole code walkthrough line by line. They're all filmed by yours truly. Okay, I got a little carried away there, but, but as I was saying, what I did in that interview, which I always recommend that other people do, is I really treated it as I am with a coworker. We have been given a problem that we have to solve sort of together, but I am the one leading. I am the one doing 80 or 90% of the work, but I'm sort of trying to have a conversation with this coworker of mine. Here I'm speaking about the interviewer and I'm gonna just try to solve this with them. And that's really how I approached that fourth interview. I really vividly remember having a very like good discussion with the interviewer and sort of, you know, using the whiteboard and sort of jumping around. And, and it was just overall like what I just described, two people working on a problem together, except I was leading sort of 90% of the conversation. Finally, the fifth interview, Nothing too special there. It sort of felt similar to the first interview. I came out of it feeling kind of neutral. I had definitely not done terrible in it, but at the same time, I didn't feel like I had done particularly amazing in it. And if I'm being honest, that fifth interview is a bit of a blur now. The one thing that I do remember from it is that I had made a uh, Python syntax error during it. I remember coming home, Googling, can you do this or that in Python and seeing you know Stack Overflow say, no, you cannot, and thinking like, oh no, I made one, syntax mistake for sure in that last interview, but that was it. And then after that fifth interview, I just had a few more minutes with my recruiter, just a few last formalities, and that was it for the interview day. Then two days later on the Wednesday, I got word from my recruiter that he had gathered all of the feedback from the interviewers. It looked pretty good and he was gonna send it to the hiring committee. Now here, I do think that I got lucky with the sort of speed of the interview feedback being gathered. Really, how long that takes is entirely dependent on how long the interviewers themselves just fill out their feedback. Um, some interviewers do it in a day, some interviewers do it in two days, which was likely the case for me, and some interviewers take you know up to a week or even two weeks if they're super busy. So I think I got pretty lucky there that it happened so fast in two days. And one day after that, on the Thursday, I got an extremely vague email from my recruiter. It's almost as if he was purposely teasing me, telling me, Clement, I got the feedback from the hiring committee. When are you ready for a phone call? Now, of course, I was like, immediately, like, please call me immediately. I didn't actually say that, but that's, that's sort of how I felt. And then I proceeded to wait about an hour and a half, which felt like an absolute eternity. I remember I was pacing around in my living room nonstop. I couldn't do anything else. I couldn't think about anything else. And finally, I got the phone call. I remember like, like it's, it's almost like, like, I'm scarred from that phone call, but it, it was very positive and, and you know, he told me that I'd gotten a higher decision from the hiring committee. Mm. But wait, there's more. This story would definitely not be complete if I didn't mention what happened during the two months after I got my hire decision, because the way that the Google hiring process works, or at least the way it worked back in 2017 and the way I think it still works today is, once you pass the interviews, once you pass the hiring committee and you get your hire decision, you are still not actually hired. You have been told that the company wants to hire you, but you do not have an actual physical offer letter in your hands. What you now have to go through is what's called the team matching process, where you're paired with a bunch of managers of various teams at the company and you get to talk to them on the phone or you know in video call and you get to see which team is a good fit for you and they get to see what candidate is a good fit for their team. Typically it's meant supposedly to favor the candidate. Like, hey, you get to sort of pick your team, you know, of all these managers that you talk to. Now the problem is that sometimes you can get very unlucky when no teams at Google have, an, have enough headcount. Headcount is this like term in the industry for basically like uh, 
room to hire people. And so sometimes you get unlucky when no team has enough headcount or when the company as a whole is sort of in a hiring freeze for whatever reason or maybe for a particular office. And so you actually don't get people who want to talk to you during the team matching process or you don't get people who can talk to you. That was the situation that I, of course, found myself in. So I kid you not when I say that I waited about a month and a half to talk to two managers, which was a grueling period of time because if you can imagine, like, I was so happy that I had effectively passed the interviews, but I didn't actually have a team yet or an actual offer yet. So by the end of the, uh, of the you know, month and a half or two months, I started getting really discouraged, but I did end up talking to, to two managers. I ended up matching with one of them that, that felt amazing and that you know, saw the potential in me and thought that I was a good fit, uh, and that was good. And fortunately, my recruiter along the entire process or throughout the entire process was super nice, very transparent, very supportive, sort of kept me in the loop all the time, which was great. And so I only have very positive things to say about the recruiter. And then the final hoop that you have to go through once you've actually matched with a team and a manager, which is the situation that I found myself in in early April 2017, is you have to go through what's called the VP and SVP sign off. It sounds exactly like what it is. Basically a VP at Google and an SVP at Google, senior VP at Google, have to review your individual, like packet or whatever and have to sign it off and accept it. Now, I had done so much research on Quora and on Google and on other sites about like, can you actually get rejected at this stage of the process? It seems like in rare cases you can. And I remember still the day that I actually got my offer. By the way, of course, I had to wait. I remember when I when I was told like, okay, you, you finalized the team matching. That was on a Friday. So then I had to wait the entire weekend until the Monday to get like that VPS VP sign off thing. And finally on that Monday, forget the exact date, it was early April, I got the actual offer. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. And then, you know, the rest is really history. That concludes my Google interview experience story. I really hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you were able to get something out of it, either a nugget of wisdom or a piece of information or some inspiration or some fun. Maybe you chuckled. If any of these things or something else happened, then the like button awaits. It is just waiting for you. So go ahead and press it or click it. Just do it. And let me know what you thought about all of this about my experience in the comments below. I'd love to hear about your experience if you have interviewed at Google in the comments below. I'd love to hear about all your thoughts and otherwise I will see you in the next video.